Hi, Otto here for Bavarian Autosport. Today we're going to be showing you how easy it is to replace brake pads and rotors on a typical BMW. We'll be using this E36 M3, which is very typical in application to almost every BMW for front and rear brakes. We have our new brake rotors, our sensor wire, rotor hold down screw, new pads, new bushings for the caliper guide bolts, our synthetic brake lubrication grease, noise free product for the pads to prevent squealing, and our brake parts cleaner. With that, we're ready to show you the tools and then we'll begin the job. Here we have the tools for this job. As you can see, there's not a lot of tools required. It is a rather simple job. We have our half inch drive breaker bar, half inch drive ratchet, 3 8 drive ratchet, eight millimeter Allen bit, six millimeter Allen bit, 16 millimeter socket. And over here we have a couple of large screwdrivers which will act as pry bars a small screwdriver, our uh, wire cleaning brush, and our caliper piston uh, tool to push the piston back into the caliper when we put the new pads on. With this, we're ready to start. Okay, now before we begin the work, you'll notice that I'm wearing the Bavarian Autosport Safe Grip gloves. These are the heavier duty blue gloves. They're good for heavy mechanical work and you can take them off and put them back on as well. So these are great to use. And with that, first we remove the anti-rattle clip. Now, you may have seen people prying the clip like this. This is not the way to take the clip off. In fact, it won't come off that way. We want to pry the clip toward the caliper like this with one bar and away, and then it comes out. Okay, now we have our two guide bolts, one and two. These secure the caliper to the mounting bracket. The guide bolts are in rubber bushings. There's a plastic cap. We'll use our small screwdriver to simply pry the cap off. Grab the bottom one, like that. And we'll use our seven millimeter Allen bit. Some models are seven and some are eight. This particular model uses the seven millimeter bit and simply unscrew the guide bolt. Now once the guide bolt is fully unthreaded from the bracket, we'll use the tool to pull the bolt out just a little bit so it's away from the bracket. In fact, we can pull the guide bolt all the way out. We're going to lube, clean and lube this later on, so that's fine. And we'll get the bottom one. And here's our lower guide bolt. Okay, now that the caliper is loose, we've removed the guide bolts, we'll pry the caliper off. We'll just use a small pry bar or a large screwdriver. And we'll support the caliper up here for the moment. Remove the outer pad. Okay, now we have our inner pad, which is affixed to the caliper piston. We simply pull it forward, and you can see these spring clips here that fit inside the piston, and we'll set that pad aside. At this point, we're ready to install the fresh pads, but we need to push the piston in. As the brake pads wear, this piston will continually push out to take up the clearance from the worn pad. In order to put the new pads in, which will be thicker than the original uh, worn pads, we need to push this piston back into its bore. For that, we have a special tool, very simple, and we simply put one of the used pads up against the caliper piston, install the tool, and screw it down. It's a, it's a simple press. And 
if you can see the piston here, we're pushing it back into its bore. When you're replacing fully worn brake pads, you'll have more distance to push the piston in. It'll actually be out maybe as far as this pad is right now to take that uh, from taking up the worn pad. That's it. Won't go any further. Remove the tool and our old used pad. And now you can see the piston is fully pushed into the bore and it's ready for the new pads. You'll notice we've got our rotor or our uh, caliper suspended with a bungee cord. That is so that it's not hanging by the hose and stressing the hose connections. Now we're using the noise-free compound on the back of these pads and this will prevent any brake squeal. The squeal is normally generated from the metal backing of the pad in contact with the metal of the caliper. As the pad moves around microscopically, it actually squeaks where you have the metal-to-metal -metal contact. The noise-free compound is to prevent that metal-to-metal -metal contact. It builds a membrane between. We simply take the brush from the compound, paint it on the back of the pad in the areas where it contacts the caliper and the piston, and then we let it cure for at least a couple of hours. We really prefer overnight. So we did these pads yesterday so that they'd have plenty of time to set up and form a good membrane uh, for the installation right now. At least, again, at least a couple of hours, but preferably overnight. So these pads have been already done and they're ready for the installation. Now in preparation to mount the caliper and the pads, we have the rubber guide bolt sleeves. Okay, These are fairly fresh. These were replaced not too long ago. If these were old and original, we would uh, replace them with new sleeves. And we have this as a kit, a guide sleeve repair kit, which comes with the new uh, rubber bushings. These simply press in and press out this way install the new one from this side going in and you're all set there. Again, these ones are okay. However, these are our original guide bolts and we're going to clean them a bit. We're going to use the brake cleaner spray and just give them a good clean down to get the old grease and melted rubber off of them. And you can see that's quite a bit different, nice and clean and they'll be ready for fresh lubricant. Okay, that brake cleaner does a great job, just pulls right off all the old rubber and grease. Now they're ready for lubrication. We'll use again the synthetic brake grease. Put a little bit on. Insert it into the bushing. Just a little bit. You can see how it comes through. We'll leave the threads right at the end for now. And this one in the other side. Again, keep the threads right at the end. Now we will dismount our hanger cord. We're ready to put the new pads in. Put the inner pad in first with the spring clip. Make sure all three arms of the spring clip go inside the piston and snap it in place. The outer pad. Okay. And now we just slip it over the rotor like that. And now we'll uh, move the guide bolts in. We'll use our seven millimeter socket. 
push the caliper in place till you can feel the bolt threads go into place. Start with the top one, continue with the bottom, and we'll just use our 3 8 drive ratchet. Tighten those guide bolts up, just nice and snug here. Again, nice and snug. We'll replace our plastic caps. Okay, and here we have our anti-rattle clip. Installs here with the outer tabs against the bracket and the inner clips aligning with the holes. We'll put our outer tabs against the bracket and we can simply squeeze it into place here. Sometimes they'll go by hand, just like that. Or we'll use a single pry tool to pry it into place, just like that. Don't try to put the holes in first. Have it on the outside on the bracket and pry it down in, and that's all secure. At this point, this side is all set. We're ready to go, mount the wheel, and move on to the next side.